Hey guys, Karen Gensmeyer for the season of You're the Worst. Of course, this is season two, and uh, season two just ended, so now I will be reviewing the entire second season to you guys. And uh, I really loved the first season. I binged it very quickly. I got it done very quickly. I was really looking forward to the second season because of the way the first season left off. But like I told you guys, what I like about the first season that it kind of feels like the ending to the show. And they left, but they did leave it open so it could go in other directions. And boy, did it ever! Because season two, in my opinion was so much bigger than season one. Season one was very basic. It was very basic in terms of just getting to know the characters, uh, getting to like the characters, because let's face it, the first, like, several episodes, it was very hard to like Jimmy and Gretchen. It, I will say that, it, honestly, it was very hard to like them. It took me a while to actually really like them as characters. Definitely, it took me a while to. They were funny, but it was hard to actually, like, latch on to them. So now that we know these characters, they did a lot more with them, and really showed that we don't know these characters as as much as we do and really I think had one of the best seasons of any show I've seen this year. There are so many great things about this season. First of all, this season was definitely a dramedy. I mean it was not a comedy. It was definitely a dramedy. There was a lot more drama in this season and it's something that you're the worst handles very very well. Definitely they did some of it in season one. Yes they had a lot of drama there but this just had so much more to it, and there was so much story going on, so much more story, and I really loved it, especially for all the characters. But let's just get into it. There's a lot to talk about, and there's a lot I loved about this entire season. Um, basically, if you guys uh, remember, in the, at the end of the first season, Jimmy and Gretchen basically decided to suddenly just move in together. They want to move in together, basically to start a regular relationship, and... Right in the beginning, it feels weird. They're acting normal. They're doing things that normal couples do. They're trying to learn how to be normal. They want to throw parties. I mean, they're just, they're doing whatever they can to be normal. And uh, they soon realize that they hate this. They don't want to be normal. That normalcy is just something that they don't have. It's not something that they're going to have. And it's not something that they want, that normal's boring, and that they're just not normal people. And or for this relationship to function, they need to not be normal. And it's true, Jimmy and Gretchen are not the most normal of people, but that's why they work so well. You know, their um, eccentricities bounce off each other very, very well, especially Gretchen, who we'll get into her character a lot more. We really do get more into Gretchen. Um, if anything, this was everybody's season, but I really feel this was Gretchen's season primarily. Gretchen had a lot more focus this season. We'll get into her. Um, but basically, they decide to not be normal because they just don't really want that. They don't want to act normal. Um, Jimmy, meanwhile, is in the middle of trying to write a book. He's trying to write a book here. Now, let me tell you guys something that I'm going to compare the show to. I'm going to compare the show to The Affair, because The Affair and You're the Worst both did this very, very well. Both did this in different ways. Um, You're the Worst throughout the season. There are several times where you don't know if Jimmy and Gretchen are actually meant for each other, like The Affair does with Allison and Noah. The reason it works on You're the Worst is because the characters on this are actually very likable, especially Jimmy. Jimmy we see a big change in this season. He's not really the dick that we know him as. Yes, he's still sort of immature. That's just how Jimmy is, though. He definitely is trying to be a more thoughtful person. He's trying to put Gretchen's needs over his, and you definitely see that throughout this entire season. And I really love seeing that. I really like the character development with Jimmy as a character. Um, he's also going through his own problems with the right his book and things like that, which I didn't find to be the most compelling of stuff, but I thought it was interesting that we saw that, definitely, especially because they wanted him to change so much, and he really didn't know what he wanted to write about. There was, there was a great, there was an episode where he gets writer's block, and he starts to, uh, think about writing an episode of NCIS, which I thought was really funny, um, that we found that out, that he wants to write an episode of NCIS, and, uh, I thought that was something I really enjoyed. And then we get to Gretchen. Something is just off about Gretchen. You don't know what it is, but she's acting weird all season long. You know, she's not really interacting with Jimmy as well. Um, and then we find out in episode five, she leaves the house um, in the middle of the night. After they have sex, she leaves the house. We don't know why she's leaving the house, but for whatever reason, she just packs up and leaves. And we don't know, well, not packs up, but she doesn't pack, she doesn't pack up, but she does leave, and she gets in her car, and we don't know where she's going. Now, I was very worried about this. I have to tell you guys, I was very worried they were going to go in this cliche direction where she's cheating on him, or she just doesn't really want this, but that's not what's going on at all. 
And that's why I thought this worked. This storyline worked just so well. In any other show, this would have been a horrible storyline. In any other show, it would have just been really stupid and very predictable. But that's the thing with You're the Worst. It's not predictable at all. And that's one of the reasons I think this show works as well as it does. Because we find out the reason that Gretchen... Um, is leaving is simply because she just isn't happy. She needs to leave. She needs a moment to herself. Sometimes she just likes to go and sit in her car, which, yeah, it's not a normal thing to do. And you're thinking, okay, this is over. You know, they've resolved this. Everything's fine. But things still don't seem fine for Gretchen. She's acting weird. She just, she isn't acting like herself. She's not acting like she wants to be included in conversations. And it's mainly because Jimmy is becoming a lot more sociable while Gretchen really isn't. There's this one really great episode where she invites all her friends over from like the old days um, from like college or high school or something like that to come to her house and they've all moved on with their lives. They all have these just fantastic lives. They have these jobs. They have kids and they're not cynical like Gretchen, like, uh, Gretchen, uh, Gretchen is and she ends up ruining her entire friendship with every single one of them because just how different she is from them. And and it was a very interesting scene because you just see that Gretchen really is not happy and you don't know why throughout this entire season. You can just tell she's not happy. And then we eventually find out what's going on in episode 7, um, which was amazing the way they handled it. Episode 7 is one of the best episodes this show has ever done, maybe the best episode this show has ever done. I absolutely loved everything about episode 7. Because episode 7, you really see Gretchen in the way that you see Allison in the affair. I think they just did it better with Gretchen here because Jimmy, like I said, is not a dick. In the affair, you really don't care about Noah and Allison because just the way they've written them. That's kind of the reason why I stopped watching the show is because of how well You're the Worst has done it. Gretchen doesn't have a job. Jimmy's off doing his own thing, you know, writing a book. He's off with his friends. He's just off doing things. She, meanwhile, is trapped in a house, and there's this great episode where there's all this stuff going on in the house. Gretchen's all just by herself. She doesn't feel like she has any friends. Even Lindsay, she doesn't seem as close with, and eventually we get this amazing reveal. And let me just tell you guys, I mean, I really love the actress that plays Gretchen, Aya Cash, last season. But Aya Cash gave an Emmy-worthy performance in this scene. I mean, this scene was just fantastic because she basically casually brings up the fact to Jimmy that she has depression. And she goes on this whole rant about how she can't feel anything. She doesn't feel, you know, she doesn't have any feelings. She feels nothing. There's nothing um, going on there. She looks at people and there's nothing. She doesn't feel like she has the same relationships. Not only has she had this depression, this is not a new thing. She's had this depression pretty much all her life. And it really changes the dynamic between Jimmy and Gretchen because you start to wonder maybe that's why Gretchen is with Jimmy because why would you be with someone like Jimmy? I mean, that's the big question. Why someone like Jimmy, especially when you think of the first episode, why were these two together? Gretchen was as lost as Jimmy was and I love that we found that out. It always seemed like Gretchen was hiding something and it really felt like that was like the last ounce of character development we needed for Gretchen's character. So for the rest of the season, she's very depressed. Jimmy's trying to pull her out of it and I just loved how Jimmy did whatever he could to try to pull her out of this. Starting with Sunday Funday, he recreates Sunday Funday just to get her to be happy again. He even pretends to hate Sunday Funday when he's actually really having fun. And it really, again, shows that Jimmy's just becoming a much better person and is definitely becoming a lot happier with himself and is enjoying himself a lot more. And uh, it's very tough. You can definitely tell it's very tough for him to um, get Gretchen to be happy because she, at first, is happy, but then she realizes that he orchestrated the whole thing and uh, that makes her not happy. Then we get this incredible, incredible episode. Probably my favorite episode of the season is actually when Gretchen visits this other couple. Um, and it's a very different episode. It's called LCD Sound System. Basically, Gretchen starts spying on these neighbors that they have. I can't remember their names right now, but they're this couple that seem to just have it all. They have kids, they're happily married, and they just seem happy together. And Gretchen is spying them because she wishes this was her and Jimmy. Jimmy and her just don't have that spark. You know, they're having sex, but there really was nothing else to it. And if you think about it, that's how it was from the beginning. I mean, when Jimmy and Gretchen met, it was simply just a friends with benefits scenario, and they eventually turned it into more of a relationship. They never really got the time to find their feelings, never got the time to really explore those feelings. They simply just went for it, just made a rational, an irrational decision, and I think Gretchen is realizing this here because this couple seems to have it all. 
And I thought it was a very good reveal when we realized that they don't have it all. In fact, it's much different than she thinks it is. I mean, this one guy uh, starts making a pass at her and uh, just is talking to her and is trying to be sociable with her. And is just basically just joking around with her. Um, but she takes it very seriously. She realizes that this couple does fight. And they're not necessarily having problems. They just fight. They're not perfect. And Gretchen doesn't see them the way she did after that because she sees that they're fighting and her and Jimmy are also fighting. But every couple fights and Gretchen doesn't seem to understand that she wants this perfect lifestyle that she simply cannot have and you definitely see that throughout this season. She wants this relation with Jimmy that's just so superficial and it's not something that they can actually have and it was very sad to see Gretchen in this state of depression, there's a, there's a part of this season where you don't know if Jimmy is going to cheat on Gretchen or not. You don't know if he's going to because then he ends up going to this bar one night. He goes to this bar just to, to I think he went there to get some inspiration for his book. I can't really remember, um, but he runs into this bartender. Let me find her name because I can't think of her name right now. Um, let me just find her name. Sorry, guys, I'm looking for her name. Okay, he runs into this bartender named Nina. Nina runs this bar, and they seem to connect very, very well. She understands Jimmy. She she sees that he's weird, but she likes him because of that. They have a good bond, and you don't know if Jimmy's going to achieve off of Gretchen. And it's a very interesting scenario that comes up here because every time these two are talking, you're like, oh shit, is he gonna go is he gonna go for it? Is he gonna go for it? They almost have sex. They almost have sex, but Jimmy decides to not do it. Mainly because he's scared of her feet, which I thought was really funny. He's scared of the way her feet look. Uh because she's a skier and because she's a skier that runs a bar, her feet look very bad and they're she has like bunions and things like that. Um, so he decides to not be with her, and I think Jimmy made a good decision there. Even though Jimmy did it basically on his own terms because he was scared by her feet because he's still kind of immature, I definitely like seeing that. In the end, he still really does love Gretchen, and he's trying to pull her out of depression. It just doesn't seem to be working, and whatever for whatever reason, it's just not working. We don't know why, but it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. Anything he does, it doesn't seem to work, and... It's really sad, and I really didn't know what was going to happen there. So that's pretty much everything that happens between Jimmy and Gretchen this season. We'll get into the finale um, when we get there, but now let's get to the two characters I felt changed the most this season, Lindsay and Edgar. These are two characters that one was very selfish, and the other you felt so bad for. And both of these characters changed so much throughout this entire season, and it's part, it's one of the reasons I love this season as much as I do. Let's first talk about Edgar, because Edgar at first really has it the worst this season. Um, because Edgar, of course, we know that he likes Lindsay. We know that he saw her sing in the first season, and he just starts to develop this crush on her, and he wants to go for it. Lindsay clearly does not like him. You can tell she does not think of him in the way that he thinks of her, and uh, she eventually starts using him. She starts using him, and Gretchen starts calling um, Edgar even her side bitch, which I thought was pretty funny. But she basically starts using him because she wants to get back with Paul. She realizes that she made a mistake, and Paul wants nothing to do with her. He's moved on to this girl, Amy, who is basically the female version of Paul. It's very funny. I loved these two together. And he wants nothing to do with Lindsay because she you know, didn't want to be with him. She cheated on him. She didn't want to be with him. And he basically wants her to sign all these divorce papers. There are all these things that are coming her way that Lindsay is just not realizing that this is her fault and that she is the one that's caused this. And it's just, she basically decides to try to get pregnant eventually. That's what she wants to do. She eventually wants to get pregnant um, because she just wants to do whatever she can to get closer to Paul. And, uh, she finds this turkey baster and basically decides to um, use it to impregnate herself and you don't know if it works and that's what happens there. Meanwhile, like I said, Edgar is still trying to pursue her and that's what happens there. And there's this great scene um, with Edgar. Eventually, Edgar realizes that he has no chance with Lindsay. He does realize this and I love the way that Edgar grew as a character. He grows so much in this season because... Edgar's the kind of person that always seemed like he just took people's advice. Like, if someone told him to do something, he'd do it. That's kind of the person that Edgar seemed like he was. And that changes this season, especially in the finale. We'll get into that. Eventually, he decides to uh, not really abandon Lindsay, but get over her because he realizes that he really doesn't have a chance with her. And he decides to go to this improv group, kind of to calm himself down and just feel better about himself. And this is where, this is kind of where Edgar just kind of comes out of his shell and finally becomes 
a very like fun guy. It actually was really fun to see Edgar in this improv group. Very much like Bojack Horseman season two, but I actually felt like they handled it better here because Edgar didn't just go to this improv group. He went there to feel better about himself. He wanted some purpose in his life. He didn't feel like he had any purpose, and he didn't just want to be Jimmy's roommate and Lindsay's side bitch. He wanted a lot more than that, and he eventually meets this girl, Dorothy, who these two connect right away. Dorothy, I love her character. She is great. She's very much into improv. She loves improv, and she really likes Edgar. You know, he really loves the idea of improv. She wants to get him more into it, and eventually these two get a lot closer. Um... And at first, she doesn't really want to uh, be with him because, I guess, men are always harassing her sexually and always trying to advance on her. But he lets her know that he actually doesn't want that. In fact, we learned that Edgar is a virgin. He's never had sex. And I thought that was a very interesting reveal. I like that we found this out. It really made us care more for Edgar. Edgar's always been, like, the, sympath the sympathetic one of the group. Now, every character in this season, I think, was definitely more sympathetic. But one of the reasons Edgar was my favorite character last season is mainly because of the fact of how sympathetic he was. I found him to be a very sympathetic figure, and this is really, I think, you know, Dorothy really helps him out. You know, she lets him know that, hey, you shouldn't be worried about that. I love you for who you are, and these two do start a relationship, even though he's very hesitant to. He decides to, and I like that Jimmy was basically telling him to go for it, to go for this relationship, that it's a good idea, and he maintains a relationship with Dorothy. Eventually, these two do surprisingly have sex, and even think about possibly moving in together. Now, we'll get into that during the finale, but I definitely love seeing Edgar. Also, all the improv scenes with Edgar, I loved. I thought they were a lot of fun to watch, and I definitely did some really great stuff there. I definitely enjoyed seeing that. Um, by the way, Gretchen does have some stuff um, with, like, um, the rap group that she always works for. I don't want to talk about that because I always find that very silly, so I'm not really going to talk about that a lot. It's always fun to watch, like, Shit Stain, and uh, I can't think of their names right now, but you guys know I'm talking about the, the rap group that she works for, the rap trio. Um, you guys know what I'm talking about. They're always fun to watch. They're in a, they're basically in a fake fight the whole season, and then eventually they get into a real fight that breaks them up, and Gretchen has to get them back together. It was probably one of the funniest things they did this season, but Lindsay eventually comes into this plot, and we'll get into that. Lindsay, like I said, though, she wants to be with Paul. She wants to do whatever she can to get closer to him. But I think Lindsay really find herself this season because, let's face it, Lindsay was probably the most shallow of all four of the characters last season. I mean, she was making all these bad decisions and didn't realize she was doing anything wrong. In fact, Lindsay pretty much acted like a child. I'm going to say that. Lindsay acted like a child. But this season, Lindsay becomes my favorite character. And it's all because of one little scene. One day, Lindsay is jogging down. You know, she wants to go talk to Paul. She basically, her car stops working or whatever. I, I don't remember exactly what happens. I think Paul took her car or something. She didn't have transportation, so she's forced to walk home. And this is when, actually, no, it's not, it's not then. It's actually in the episode, um, it's actually in another episode where she comes home on how it was a Halloween episode I think she comes home and she finds that her TV is still on her house is a mess and she just starts to realize I've never done anything that's too hard I've always given up on things that are too hard and I need to stop doing that and she just starts to think of little things like she doesn't turn a TV off because it was just too hard for her to do and she's been so lazy and she's realizing that she's been lazy and the reason that things haven't gone well for her is because she just quits when something gets hard which is something that I feel us as human beings do a lot and I like that Lindsay is finally realizing this in this scenario you know she finally realizes I screwed up I'm the one that did this and I like that she blamed herself. She realizes, look, I'm the one that did this. I made this wrong, and I want to make things right. I don't know if impregnating herself is the right thing to do, but that's what she decides to do. She decides to impregnate herself because she wants to do something hard. She wants to do something drastic, and she wants to make a change. She wants to go for this relationship with Paul because she feels she only quit because it was just too hard. It was too hard for her because she didn't want commitment, and she was afraid of commitment and because that was just too hard for her. She didn't know how to stay committed to him. She didn't want to be committed to him. And that's why she broke things off in them. And she's realizing that it honestly was kind of pointless. And that's why she wants to get back with him. But of course, he's moved on with this girl, Amy. And uh, that's why he doesn't really want to be with her. And eventually, she actually ends up um, helping out Shit Stain and the rap trio. I can't think of their names right now, but she helps out the rap trio with this song um, called 
phone ring who this which i um i thought that was great i love that song and also they get Lindsay to sing a lot more because let me let's face it Lindsay, the actress that plays her one she's very hot i will say that very attractive probably the most attractive of the group in my opinion the hottest girl of the group by far gretchen's attractive but Lindsay definitely i think is more attractive Two, she has an incredible singing voice, and they use it a lot this season, as we know from season one, and they use it a lot, which I definitely really love seeing. Um, now, as far as her feelings for Edgar go, her and Edgar, I think, are just best friends, really. They are best friends, and she eventually was using Edgar, and she eventually stopped using him because she realizes that she is using him, and she feels bad about this. And I love when Lindsay is just realizing that she's been this selfish girl, and she doesn't want to be selfish anymore she wants to do something selfless and supporting a baby she feels is something selfless that she should do she doesn't want this baby just to get back with paul she wants it because she wants commitment she feels that if she has a baby that she can stay committed to this baby and that she can give this baby the love and nurture that it deserves because she's never really given anyone or anything that much time she's just dropped things when it got when it gets too hard and she knows that being a mother is going to be very hard and that's kind of what she wants to do so she decides to impregnate herself and uh eventually she realizes that yeah she is in fact pregnant which i thought was very interesting to see um i like seeing her go on this you know um go on this journey in the show where she's trying to you know basically um not knowing what to do if she's gonna have this baby or not it was very interesting to watch and i definitely really loved seeing that they did that very well and just the whole arc with Lindsay made her a much better character, and I definitely really love it. Not that she wasn't already a good character, but it definitely made her a much better character. And that goes for everyone. I mean, there are just little things this season. There's an episode where Jimmy's parents come to visit him, and you see how shallow his family is. I mean, they really treat him like shit. They call him Shitty Jimmy for crying out loud, and they're really rude, and you kind of think, you know what, this is how Jimmy was in season one. He was rude. He was, he just, he spoke his mind he didn't hold anything back he wasn't a nice he just wasn't a nice guy in general and you really do see that there so when his family comes to visit and he is being very you know stand he's not being very standoff he's actually being very welcoming this his family doesn't like this because they're not usually like this they're not usually very welcoming they're usually very just you know they make their presence known they're the kind of people that just walk into a room and just like start talking and gossiping and things like that and start they're very judgmental and critical of Jimmy and even critical of Gretchen and it's a very good episode because you really see how much Jimmy is changing and I definitely really love seeing that now it is my least heard episode of the season because I did feel some of it was a bit unnecessary like some stuff they did with the sister was a bit unnecessary but I thought for the most part it was a very um great episode because it just showed the way that Jimmy um was I definitely really love seeing that and it just shows how much Jimmy is changing and that goes for everyone how much everyone is changing I definitely really love seeing that and that's really what the scene's all about it's all about growing up and realizing who you really are Gretchen is the only person though that I don't really think realizes who she is until the finale really rolls around and then we'll get into that so now let's get to the finale because I've talked about pretty much everything that happens this season. If there's anything left out, let me know because there's a million things that happen this season and there might be something that I did leave out. Um, so if there is, I apologize for that. I don't think I did. Um, not really. I don't really think there's anything that I did left leave out. Oh, there was this whole thing with Lindsay where for a while she wanted to just abandon men altogether, but that didn't last very long because then she has that revelation, like I said, and then she just wants to change herself, which I love seeing. But now let's get in the finale because there's a lot to talk about on this finale. So first of all, the whole thing with Gretchen, her not wanting to take these pills is a very interesting thing. Why did she not want to cure herself of this depression? Because she's used to it. She's been in this habit, she's had it all her life, and she didn't want to take these pills because she just feels this way. She's always felt this way, and she's never really wanted to break it because she's always felt this way, and she's used to it. And she's, I think Gretchen's kind of scared of what's gonna, it's gonna be like when she's out of this depression because she's been in it all her life. And her not being in it, I think, kind of scares her, and I can totally understand that. Why wouldn't it scare her? I mean, obviously, she's very, um, you know, she's obviously very sad all the time. She's very depressed. She's never satisfied, 
and she doesn't really know how to break it. And that scene where Jimmy realizes it was just a pill, he gets really upset, understandably, because they just went through this whole thing with her, with this depression, and she could have just taken that pill the entire time. So I like that Jimmy tried to get back at her and basically just tried to get as drunk as possible and be the unstable one and see if she would come to his rescue, which, let's face it, was a very bad plan and we knew really wasn't going to go very well, but it did make for some very funny scenes, I have to say. I love seeing Jimmy in all those stages, um, being drunk and Edgar knowing that he was drunk, but there's a lot more going Going on in this finale than that um, because Gretchen decides to go to for whatever reason I don't know why she decided to do this I honestly don't know why I think she just I don't know she just decided you know what I'm gonna do this um, for whatever reason she decides to go to Jimmy's bartender friend starts flirting with her and basically they she almost kisses her she literally almost kisses Jimmy's friend Jimmy's bartender friend that he almost hooked up with and she kicks her out of her bar, understandably. Why wouldn't you kick Gretchen out of your bar after that? I mean, she was basically making a pass at her and being like, oh, I'm a lesbian or whatever. Um, but she, and I think the reason that Gretchen did this is because if she can get close to Jimmy, she's getting close to Gretchen. And Gretchen clearly doesn't believe in boundaries. She doesn't want boundaries. And I think Gretchen also really just wants to be close to someone because she really doesn't have anyone. She has Lindsay, but that's really it. And I feel like Gretchen has felt like a sense of loneliness and her doing that to... The bartender, while it was funny, it was meant to be a funny scene, I think it was also very sad because it was really the only person that she could talk to about Jimmy, and she felt close to her, and that's why she did that, because she just wants someone to be close to, and she doesn't really have that with Jimmy. There was a point in this episode where I kind of felt like they were trying to show that Jimmy and Gretchen should never be together, um, and that this was wrong, what they did. There was this great scene where Jimmy basically tells Edgar to not move in with Dorothy and to just forget about her, because he made a irrational decision with Gretchen, uh, because he didn't realize that she was crazy, and he doesn't think that Edgar should do the same thing, that Edgar should be with Dorothy. So he breaks it off with her, he breaks things off with Dorothy, and, uh... He thinks, at least, that they broke things off. He tells her, I don't want to move in. I don't think we should do this. I'm just not ready. And uh, he pretty much thinks that they've broken up. And it's a really great scene. We'll get into that a little bit later. Um, we also got some stuff with Becca and Vernon in this episode. Lindsay having to face Becca, telling her that she is pregnant, was very funny. I definitely love seeing that. The scene where Vernon is telling Becca, I'm tired of putting up with you, I thought was just great. I love Becca and Vernon. Some of the funniest stuff. Um, they're always funny. I always love Becca and Vernon. I thought it was interesting, though, that the first season was, um, I believe, there, you know, her saying that she's expecting a baby, and then the second season being the gender reveal party. I just thought that was very interesting the way we saw that, um, because I thought they did that very well. I also thought it was just interesting because the first season I'm with something with Becca and Vernon's party, and this season I'm with Becca and Vernon's party. It just works very well because it finds a way for all the characters to come together in a very natural way. That's why I think they do it, because it just, all the characters are going to be there, obviously, and it would make sense for them to do it in a very natural um, way. However, I have to say, one of my favorite scenes episode by far was the development with Paul. I thought Paul was great. I mean, Paul was a character that I'm not going to say was underutilized. He really wasn't, because... He was never, he was also, he was only there really because he was in Lindsay's story. That's why he was there. And he had his own little thing with Amy. But this is really the episode where I really feel we finally see how much Paul actually cares for Lindsay. He actually really does love Lindsay, and he wants to be with Lindsay. And you see with Amy that she really isn't as good for him as we think. There's a scene where she comes in, and she actually abuses him. She's abusing him, and it's because he broke things off with her. And he tells Lindsay that he's happy that she's putting herself before him. And we realize that they did, in fact, have sex, and that this is going to be Paul's baby. They had sex for, I guess, 35 seconds, because in the first episode, they do have a small thing for, like, a few seconds, and apparently was unprotected. So, it is, in fact, Paul's baby. Paul and Lindsay are back together. I love seeing that. The scene where they sang that song together was so great, and it really was a great parallel to season one. Season one, Lindsay was all alone. She didn't know what to do. She saw Edgar, who just, you know, she lit up his world, and now Edgar's moved on. He's with Dorothy, and she's with Paul. But then the scene where they go on a motorcycle together, you can tell is different for Lindsay because it's something she's never really done before. Because if you remember in season one, she was never really interested in Paul in general. She wasn't interested in his work. She wasn't interested in what he was doing, mainly because she just didn't care. And I feel like Lindsay is thinking, you know what, I don't care. 
Um, I don't really care about this, but I, I can't say no. I can't say no because I need to show that I care. And in order for her to show that she cares, she needs to do something she probably is not that com uncomfortable with. An example of that is the motorcycle at the end of the episode, which I thought was very funny, and I definitely love seeing that. Um, the scene where Jimmy tells Edgar to go after Dorothy, I loved, and I love that Dorothy said that they're not broken up, that they're simply just, she was mad at him, and she was gonna get on the train, and he was gonna convince her not to. Very sweet scene. I really do see Edgar as, like, a child at heart, and that's one of the reasons I love Edgar so much, is because he really is a child at heart, if you think about it. He's just, he's learning about relationships. It's great to see. He's a character that, you know, he's had PTSD, and he's gotten over it, and just seeing how much he's changed. The scene where he runs up to Dorothy, tells her, I I'm not going to let you go, which is so great, and they did a great job at not making it cheesy. It felt very natural and really worked for his character. I absolutely loved everything they did there. And then the ending where Jimmy um, is drunk and Gretchen does come up to him, and they have that fantastic scene where he's eating Cheetos and is pretty much drunk, and he she's talking to him about how she flirted with the bartender, and it seems like she's out of it. You know, like, she's back. She's... She wants to do something about her depression, and she tells him that she's going to talk to someone about it She will, because she never has done that. She's never talked to someone about it. She's never done anything about it, and she wants to do something about it because she's not just going to let this affect her. She's not going to have the depression throughout her whole life because she wants to be happy. In order for her to be happy, she needs to talk to someone about her depression, and I definitely love seeing that. And then the very last scene, we find out that when Jimmy was drunk, he told Gretchen that he loved her, and she said that she loves him too. Perfect way to end this season. Really show that these two are very good together, and that they finally, I think, are going to be a real couple, and are going to support each other, and are there for each other. And that's one of the reasons why I love this season so much, and that's basically how this season ends. So overall, guys... Season 2 was so much better than Season 1. I really did love Season 1, but Season 2 made this one of the best shows on TV. I mean, this is the perfect example of romance. I mean, honestly, I've heard people say that you're the worst, the most realistic romantic comedy on TV. It's true because it's really only funny in scenarios. That's really how you're the worst is. I mean, it's just things that characters say. It's never unintentionally funny. It's never funny in an awkward way. It's funny in things that characters say, and it's funny in scenarios. That's how it's funny, the way these characters are written. But the drama that they gave them in the background they gave them is something I really appreciate this season. I really do love all these characters, and I'm very interested in seeing where they're going to go. Uh, Lindsay, I feel like Lindsay, even though she felt uncomfortable on the motorcycle, I feel like that's trying to show that, you know what, I'm uncomfortable here, but I'm with Paul, and I'm happy because of that. And, you know, she does have that look on her face like she doesn't really want to be there, but I do feel that Lindsay does want to be with Paul, and she does want to show that she does care because, obviously, he wants commitment. She wants to show that she is committed, and I definitely really love seeing that. I love um, Edgar and Dorothy. I think they're great together. I hope that they things work out between them. I really do love those two. Gretchen and Jimmy, it does seem like things are going to work out very well for them, and I definitely love seeing that. It just really ended very hopeful for everyone. I love this episode. It ended in a very hopeful way. The Heart is a Dumb Dumb was a perfect title for this episode because it really is true. The heart is dumb sometimes. Sometimes love can make you do really stupid things. For example, what Gretchen did with, uh, with you know, Jimmy's bartender friend. I, can't, I keep forgetting her name, but you know what I'm talking about. Um who I don't think we'll ever see her again because she is weirded out by Jimmy and Gretchen, she's probably going to be restraining her too if she ever saw her again. But overall, guys, that's basically my review this season. You're the Worst is by far one of the best shows on TV. It will definitely be on my top 10 list of TV shows. I absolutely loved it. It's probably my favorite comedy on TV, I gotta be honest with you guys. I mean, it was funny. It really was funny. I, I do have to say that. Every episode, I was laughing, but every episode, I also felt very, um, a lot of empathy for these characters, and I think that's really what works so well on the show is that it knows how to be funny in certain situations but then it also knows where to have hearts and they did that very well throughout this entire season i love that about this season let me know what you guys thought of this season i loved it so much i think this season was just so much better i know a lot of people didn't like the depression stuff but i thought they handled it very very well probably most realistic interpretation of depression i've seen on tv but let me know what you guys thought of this episode like i of, the, of this season in general i absolutely loved it and i will see you guys in my next video which will be for, I think, Supergirl. Yeah, Supergirl, and I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.